Digitizer MBX webinar. My name is Nancy Fiedler and I'm an educator with Genome America. Today we're going to take a tour of some of the features and functions of Digitizer MBX. And while working through a simple project, we're going to open an, an existing embroidery design and add some lettering. Then you can use the design you've created to make a cover for a workbook that you can keep by your computer to take notes during our webinars, or even jot down your own discoveries as you work with Digitizer MBX. Your dealer will be able to provide you with a hard copy of the directions for our digitizing and the instructions to make the notebook cover that you see. If you haven't done this already, be sure to insert the dongle into your computer and open Easy Design. If you have any questions as I go along, please ask your host to type in the question in their um, question box on their screen. Or if I need to slow down, let me know that too. Before we get started, I want to share some exciting news. There are two new updates available at www.genomi.com. One is for the MemoryCraft 12,000 and we have another one for Horizon Link. One of the benefits of these free updates is the machine and the program will recognize the two new hoops available for the MemoryCraft 12,000. The first one is the flat hat hoop and the second one is the ASQ22 quilting hoop which comes in the new AccuFill quilting kit. AccuFill is a program that will automatically resize quilt motifs and calculate the correct number of hoopings so that you can quilt any size area that you want, up to a king size quilt. In the AccuFill quilt kit for the MemoryCraft 12,000, you're going to get the hoop, a clear acrylic placement tool, eight magnets to hold your quilt sandwich in the hoop, the AccuFill tool program, which is for your computer, plus 70 quilting motifs. And just as a reminder, there is a professional quilting kit, which includes an 8-inch square quilting hoop available for the MemoryCraft 11,000 Special Edition. We also have just received in the new 9mm Snap-on Ruffler for your MemoryCraft 12,000. Please check with your dealer for details on these new products. On my book cover, I decided to use laminated fabric. This type of fabric tends to stick to the bottom of your presser feet, so I used the Ultra Glide Foot to sew. If you choose non-laminated fabric, I would recommend using the border guide foot to make perfectly spaced rows of decorative stitches to embellish your cover. To avoid hoop burns and creases on the laminate fabric, I used Jenny Haskins Hoop Magic, which is a pressure sensitive stabilizer. Place the stabilizer paper side up in your hoop, then score the paper with the tip of your seam ripper. The paper will peel off to reveal a sticky surface to place the fabric on and it will be held securely during your embroidery. Also, it's very difficult to mark the laminated fabric. So I used another product from Jenny Haskins called Template Magic. I used the print function in Digitizer MBX to print a template. Simply peel off the paper backing and press it on the fabric to give you the hash marks to line the design up in the hoop. Once the hoop is on the machine and you are satisfied with the pl placement, just peel off the template and it will leave no marks or residue on your fabric. Another great tool for placement is the PAL or Perfect Alignment Laser. Simply line up the, the inner hoops horizontal horizontal and vertical markings with the illuminated crosshair. And then when you insert it in the outer hoop, it's perfectly placed. 
The PAL helps guide the fabric edge for precise seam allowances, and it's also handy for beading, scrapbooking, drawing, fabric cutting, and I'm sure we'll think of a lot more reasons to use this great tool. I love embellishing, and the Ribbon Sewing Guide is a wonderful tool that will hold any ribbon or strip of fabric from a fourth of an inch up to one inch wide centered under the presser foot so that you can add any type of decorative stitches. What a great way to personalize the ribbon that you can use to create a bookmark in your digitizer notebook. I've even used it with the ribbon sequin foot to stack two different sized ribbons and embellish both with a decorative stitch. The ribbon sewing guide will fit any Junomi sewing machine. I added a fancy swirl from the Lunchbox Quilt's Fancy Feathers to my book cover. This CD of embroidery designs includes eight whimsical applique birds plus three additional designs that complement the birds. Maybe you want to add leaves to your book cover or sunflowers and scoop it up shows lots of sweet treats. Check out all of the quilt designs from Lunchbox Quilts, especially the new one, Cocktail Recipes. These patterns come with a CD with all the embroidery designs that you need, as well as the written directions for two projects in every package. Don't forget to change your needle often. I used the Janome blue tip embroidery needles on the project I made today, and I love the ease and convenience of the Janome pre-wound bobbins. I also used Janome polyester embroidery thread, which gives your stitching a stunning sheen, and it's in a rainbow of bright colors. It's designed specifically for professional style embroidery and decorative stitching. The 100% shrink and fade resistant polyester thread is static free for better embroidery and performance. It comes in three assortments. There are 26 colors in each assortment plus one spool of bobbin thread. There's a total of 78 colors. The lunchbox quilt designs are appliques. I love to use my duckbill applique scissors. These sharp scissors will lift the upper layer of fabric to prevent cutting the bottom layer, and the bent ham handle helps you move in the direction that you want. Another time saver is to add a thread stand to your embroidery machine. These stands have upright spool holders that will accommodate the mini king and king size cones of thread. Your dealer will be able to recommend the spool stand for your embroidery machine. Cutting tools also will make a difference in the accuracy of your pro projects. I love using the True Cut system. The double-sided True Cut mats come in three popular sizes and are self-healing for extended use. They also include angled reference guidelines for cutting bias strips. All of the True Cut rotary cutters come with the True Cut Cutter Guide. This guide, combined with the track on the rulers, is what makes it possible to achieve straight, precise cuts. As you move the rotary cutter along the track on the ruler, the guide keeps the cutter from slipping away. Also, for those of you who love to travel with your embroidery machine, Shinomi now has a hard side rolling case designed for the MemoryCraft 12000. It provides durable and lasting machine protection. It has a telescoping handle, multi-directional trolley wheels for easy maneuverability, and it opens from the front and middle for easy packing. There's an inner cushion for added support, as well as storage for the hoops and other accessories. It also comes with an additional carrying bag for your extension table. Another option for other Janome sewing embroidery machines and sergers is the Tudo rolling bag, 
which also features the multi-directional trolley wheels and telescoping handle. The Tuno bag is available in an assortment of lively colors. A book cover is a great way to test out a newly digitized design. And I think once you've made your first notebook cover, you'll be coming up with more ideas and be personalizing everything from notebooks to cook cookbooks. And you'll find they even make great gifts. Digitizer MBX is made up of five components. Easy Design is the program you'll be using most of the time. This is where an embroidery design is created. Design Gallery is a cataloging system that will help you find embroidery designs, file them in a manner that you like, and also do batch conversions to multiple embroidery formats. Easy Edit is an advanced program which allows you to edit stitch files. Corel Draw Essentials is an integrated graphic program where you can create and work with images that can instantly be converted into stitches. And Corel Photo Paint, which gives you the tools for editing photos. We will be exploring these features of these components during the Digitizer MBX webinars. Today, I'm going to be using Easy Design and Design Gallery, which are the programs that you will be using most of the time. Make sure your dongle is then inserted into your computer and you've opened Easy Design. The do dongle is not just a security de device. The dongle contains your program. This is why it takes a minute or two for the program to open. Make sure you take care of that dongle. Once the program opens, a pop-up window with the wizard will open. Today, you can close that. When you open Easy Design, this is the window that will appear. Now your screen may look slightly different than mine, depending on when you were using it last, but we'll work through any differences together when we get there. The first thing, when you look across the top, we have our menu. And it looks like a menu in most Windows programs. A great feature is when you put your mouse on an icon, and if you leave it there a second, a little pop-up window appears, and it tells you what that icon will do. So in this case, my cursor is on the visualizer icon, and it tells me that it switches between stitch view and simulation view. If I need more information, all I need to do is press the F1 key on my keyboard. And it takes me instantly to the help screen with that information. If you want the instruction manual, if you go to Help from the menu and click on it and click On Screen Manual, a PDF file will open that is your On Screen Manual. You can print out chapters, pages, or the whole book if you choose from this function. Also, under Help, we have an on-screen workbook, which has exercises to help build your digitizing skills. Occasionally, you might want to know what version of digitizer you are using. Under Help, there's a button that says About Digitizer MBX. When I click on that, a pop-up window appears. And at the very bottom, it tells me that this is version 4, 0K. Simply click OK, and you'll close the window. Depending on the type of computer you have, the size of your screen, occasionally your square hoops don't look square. On the menu, if I click on Setup, 
and I scroll down to Screen Calibration and click, a window will appear. This is the window to help me calibrate my screen so it looks everything looks square. You would actually take a ruler and measure this window. So the width of my little pop-up was 4.78 inches and the height was 2.96 inches. Just type them in and click OK. You only need to do this one time and every time you use your program your hoops will look accurate and proportion on your screen. Under my menu is my standard toolbar and you'll recognize many of these icons from once again a lot of programs. We have new and open, save, print, print preview, cut, copy and paste. I'm sure you've used those many times. Next to that it lets me choose the machine I'm working with. When I click on the drop down arrow, I can choose any one of these Janome machines. For today's project, I want us all to use the MemoryCraft 12000. I will show you at the end of the class how to set the design for other machines. Next to the machine, we have Send to Machine, Write to Card, Design Gallery. We're going to come back here in a minute. We have Undo and Redo, and my favorite button one, especially when I was starting, called Stop. Occasionally, you might have a function and you can't, you don't know how to make it stop. Simply press the red X, or you can touch Escape on the keyboard. Next to that, we have the, the Switch to Easy Edit icon, which would take us directly into the Easy Edit program, and the Switch to Graphic Program tools. These will all be worked with in future webinars. Today, I want to use the Design Gallery. When you click on the Design Gallery, it opens in a new window. On the right hand side is where I will be seeing all of my embroider designs, and on the left hand side I'm looking inside my computer. Design Gallery only looks for two things. It looks for embroidery files or image files. When I click on the drop down arrow, I can tell it if I'm looking for a specific embroidery format. I can look for all embroidery formats, all image files, or look for both images and embroideries. I'm going to set it for all files today. When you install the Digitizer MBX in the Documents file of your computer, it automatically installed a file called Embroidery Album. And in the Embroidery Album, we have all kinds of designs and images to work with. On the screen, I can see the name of these designs, but I don't know much information about them. On the menu where it says View, when I click on View, right now it shows me that I'm seeing the design thumbnail. If I click on Design List, I can see the name of the design, the format, and was when it was created, but not much else. If I go to View and I click Design Thumbnails and Summary, this gives me all the information I need. I can see the image, the number of stitches, the number of colors, the size, when it was created, and the format it's in. Right now, this is in the JAN format. The JAN format is the master file. The JAN format retains all the original information when the design was created. So this object size, the stitch type, the colors, if there's any graphics, are all saved in the Chan file. Now, I want to create a folder in my computer so I can 
keep all of my webinar project in one place. If you put your cursor on the embroidery album, file and right click, a pop-up appears and it says add a folder. So let's click on add folder. And a new folder appears and I'm going to name it MBX Webinar. And now we have a new folder to save our projects in. I'm going to click back on the embroidery album to bring those designs back into the screen. After you've created several designs and saved them in the GN format and done a stitch, a stitched uh, test out, maybe you want to convert several of them into the Jeff file, which is the stitch file, all at one time. And the design gallery is the perfect way to do this. If I hold the control key on my left, my keyboard, I can select several Jan files. Then from my menu, if I select File and Convert, a pop-up window appears. And I simply have to put a check mark under the format that I want to convert it to. You can save into multiple formats. So for today, I'm just going to save it as a GIF. Now before I click OK, the other thing I need to do is I need to make sure that my destination folder is correct. It always remembers where you were the last time you did the conversion. So make sure and do a browse and that the folder you want to save your conversion, converted designs to is correct. So I'm going to click on my MBX webinar folder, click OK, and now I'm going to click OK. It wants to know if I want to make a log file, and in this case I don't need a record, so I'll just say no. It'll take a few seconds, but a window will pop up and tell us that it's converting the, the, the designs. All I need to do now to check is that I come back on the left side of my screen and I double click on my MBX webinar folder, there are my designs and they are all, all now in the GEF format. If you want more information about the design gallery, If you go to page 264 in the user manual, you'll find a whole chapter about using the design gallery. All right, let's start our project. I'm back in Easy Design. And we've selected the 12,000. The next toolbar is the View toolbar, where I can zoom in and out, I can display stitches, I can turn on the visualizer. If I had an image in the background, I can turn it on and off. If I've created a graphic in the graphic program, I can turn those graphics on and off. I can turn off the grid that's on my screen or leave it on. I do like to leave it on because then it gives me some lines to, to work with. I can turn on and off applique fabric when I'm creating appliques, and I can display the hoop or take it off. I do want to use the hoop today, and when you click on the drop-down arrow, it will always show you the hoops that are available for the machine that you've selected. So today, I want to select the square 23. Next to that, we could turn on an overview window. We also can tell Digitizer MBX what type of measurement system you prefer to work with. You can either select, select metric or US. 
I'm going to stay with US. And then at the end we have some traveling tools which we'll be working with in future webinars. Now right now I only see part of my hoop. I'm going to tell you a quick shortcut to see the whole hoop. On the keyboard, if you touch the key that has a question mark and the backslash, touch it one time, it zooms back so you can see the entire hoop in the screen. Now I want to add an embroidery design. If I go to open, it will open a new window. And in this case, I want to work in the hoop that's on my screen. So from the menu, I'm going to go to Embroidery and insert a design. The design I want today, I stored in my documents in a file called Lunchbox Quilts. Or if you were working from a CD, you would simply navigate to your CD drive. The pattern was Fancy Feathers, and here's my Jeff file, so I'm going to open it. But right now it says no items match your search. That is because Digitizer looks for the Jan file, which would be a master file that I would have created. Since these are designs I purchased, I need to look for Jeff. So I'm going to click on the drop down arrow, and Digitizer will open all of these embroidery formats. I know I'm looking for Jeff, so I'm going to click on the Jeff. And sure enough, here are the designs. When you select the design, if there's a check in the preview, you will see a little preview of the design you want. For today, I want to select Left Swirl and Open. After just a couple seconds, the design will open, and it opens exactly in the center of the hoop. Now, right now on my screen, my design is all in a bright pink. If I had the visualizer on, and I'm going to come up to my view bar and click on the little eyeglasses, it looks like a true view. I know that the whole design is select because I see the little black handles, but sometimes when there are a lot of designs on the screen, it is hard to tell what's selected. I prefer to work with the visualizer off, because then I know anything that's bright pink is what I've got selected. I'm going to teach you another little shortcut. On the keyboard, if you touch the letter T, you can turn on the true view or turn it off with just one little touch. So we're going to make sure that our visualizer is off for today. Now, all of the design is selected. If I put my mouse on and started to drag it, there would be a possibility that this design could fall apart on me, because each of these little parts and colors are called objects, and they are each separate little objects. Since I don't want, to fall, want them to fall apart, I'm going to go to the word Edit and Group. Now, if I click off and I come over, when I simply click in the center of my design or any place on the design, all of those objects are grouped together and they won't fall apart when I move them. So anytime you bring in an existing embroidery design, it's a good idea to group them before you do anything else on the screen. Now, on the bottom of my window, I have my editing toolbar. Now, the first one shows a little hand, and this is our select tool. You always want to make sure this is highlighted in order to select an object. Next to that, it's called polygon select. If I had several objects and I only wanted to group a few of them, I could use this tool to lasso three or four move them or resize them together. The next one says Object Details. And this lets me modify the details of the object I have selected. Reshape Object. Once again, sometimes I want to reshape 
something I've drawn. We have flip vertically, flip horizontally, and rotate. Next to that we have some um, effects that we can add to designs. We have some tools for cutting. Since they're grayed out, that's just letting me know that there is no object now that I can use that tool with. We have some backtrack and repeat functions. Always tie off and trim. And on my screen, I also have the combine and the layout mode. Don't worry if you don't see all of these functions on your screen. I will show you how to get there when we're ready to use those tools. For today, I want to rotate my object so that he's laying on his side. The easiest way is to come down to my rotate icon. If I left click, it will rotate it counterclockwise. If I right click, it's going to go clockwise. So I'm going to right click on my rotate tool two times. Now I'm going to give you another shortcut which comes in very handy. I would like to zoom in pretty close on this whole embroidery design. On my keyboard, if I touch the number zero, it zooms it in so that the whole embroidery design is on my screen. The reason I want to do this is I want to accurately get this design placed. I could use my mouse and click and drag, but since I want to just move a little bit and be very accurate, on my keyboard I'm going to use the down arrow and I'm just going to hold the down arrow while the design moves. I want to move the design so that it sits just below the center horizontal line. Wasn't that easy? Now I want to bring that whole hoop back into my screen so I'm going to touch the key with the question mark on it. Now I want to add something new. I'm going to deselect my embroider design, which means I'm simply going to put my mouse someplace on the screen that's off the design and click. Now the next toolbar I want to talk about is the lettering toolbar. It's the across the top. The first one is monogramming where we could do personalized monograms in all kinds of sizes. Lettering. We can change the font size. We can change the width, the angle if it's italicized, the orientation, and once we have lettering in there you can even add borders or add lettering art. Today, we're just going to click on the lettering icon and a window pops up. When we install Digitizer MBX, there are 100 fonts that came with the program. As I scroll down, I go past those 100 fonts and I start seeing the true type fonts that are built into my computer. So we can use the fonts that came with the program as well as any true type font that you happen to have. For today, we're going to scroll back to the top and the font I want to use is called Arnold. Under Arnold, we can choose the size. For today, I'm going to choose one inch. I'm going to click in the box and I'm going to type in all in uppercase letters, the word create. The next row shows the justification. If I was doing several lines of writing, I could do left justification, right, centered, or full. I want to use center justification because we're just using one word right now. After that we have orientation. I want to use vertical and I'm going to click OK. 
Now, I need to tell the digitizer where I want my word to appear. I'm going to place my cursor on the left-hand point of this horizontal crosshair, and I'm going to click, and in just a short second, my word appears. Now when I look at it, I might decide that I want to change the size of my font. It's very simple. If I come up to the font size, I can type in a new number here. Now, I love this new function. Oftentimes you might be getting reading directions or get a design, and it's in metric. If I have something that's in metric, all I have to do is type in the metric number, so in this case, 30 mm, and when I hit enter, it automatically converted it into inches and then resized the word to the size I wanted. Now, I want to add another word. So I'm going to deselect create, so I'm going to click off the screen, and I'm going to go back to my lettering box. For my next word, I want to use cityscape, or city script. So I scroll to city script. I want half an inch or 0.5 inch, and we're going to type in the word share with upper and lowercase letters. The justification is going to stay the same, and this time I want to use circle clockwise, which is the ABC on the upper part of the little circle, and I'm going to click OK. Now, to create a circle or letters that are in an arc, you have to generate two points, the center of the circle and the radius. Now, once again, the screen is far away. It's a little difficult to see. I want to zoom in on my design. So I'm going to touch, once again, the number zero on my keyboard. Makes it much easier to see. I've decided that I want to put my word share in a little arc over the right-hand curve of my swirl. So I'm going to put in my first point, which is the center, in the center of the green circle. So I just make a left click, and as I drag my mouse, I can see where my radius is coming to the right. So I'm going to try to take my mouse to the right, about five grids over, and left click. Then on the keyboard, I'm going to press Enter, and Share appeared. Now, if I want to do a little repositioning, once again, I just find it very accurate to use the arrows on my keyboard. I'm going to deselect Share, so I'm going to click off in a space where there's nothing. And let's go back to the lettering box and we're going to add another word. This time, the font I want is called Tune. So I'll scroll down and find Tune. The size, let's use 0.75 or 3 fourths of an inch. And we're going to type in Love, all in lowercase letters. Once again, it's one word will stay with center justification. But I want to change the orientation to circle counterclockwise, which is the ABC under the little oval, and click OK. Now, once again, I need to enter in two points. This time I want my word love to curve under the left-hand side of my swirl. So Put your mouse between the two green circles on the left. I'm going to left click and drag. Once again, about four or five grids to the right. I'm 
going to left click and I'm going to press, press enter on the keyboard and my word appeared. Once again, just use the arrows to position it. Now, let's add one more word. Click off to deselect. Go back to your lettering icon. The font I want this time is called Drama. So we'll scroll back to the top of the lettering. and locate drama. I want to put in 0.90 inches for the size and I'm going to type in the word renew with upper and lower case letters. Once again, we'll stay with cent uh, center justification but the orientation I want to use this one time is called Any Shape. So I'm going to click Any Shape and OK. Now anytime you use a drawing tool, because this is going to be, we're going to, we're going to draw a line, there's just two things you need to know. When you left click, you get points. Now to erase something, you just hit backspace on the keyboard. To get a curved line, if I right click, the line will curve. And once again, just hit backspace to eliminate any points that you don't like. So I want to make a wavy line for my word renew. So I'm just going to right click in about four or five positions, just in a random gentle curve, and then press enter on the keyboard. And my word appeared. Now, since it's random and I didn't really know how my letters were going to work, they look like they're a little bit stacked and in the way. Now, I would like to zoom in on these to get a little closer look. If I put my mouse over the word renew and use the scroll on my mouse, I can zoom in to take a closer look at those letters. Or you can use the zoom in uh, key on the view. So I'm going to scroll on just a little so I can see this a little better. Now, I really have to reshape this word. So on my edit toolbar, the fourth tool from the left is reshape object. So I'm going to click on reshape because that's what I want to do. When I click that, curved line reappears with some blue dots. And the blue dots were what the points I had clicked at. I can take these dots and I can move them and reposition them that which will help me change the shape of my curvy line. Once I've kind of determined the shape that I like, I may need to do some respacing of my letters. You can see that when I activated my reshape tool, each of the letters got a little pink block. When I click on the pink block, I can now drag each letter and position it where I think it would look the best. Now I'm going to zoom in even a little bit closer on the letter N. Once again, when I have selected a specific letter, in this case the letter N, some more little buttons have appeared around that letter. At the very top, there's a two-way arrow going up and down. When I put my cursor on and I drag it, I can change the height of my letter N. I'm going to undo. In the right-hand side of the letter N now, there's a two-way arrow going horizontal. If I drag it, I can make my letter N wider, and I'm going to undo. In the upper right corner, there's a little two-way arrow at a di 